Hello and welcome back to our Power BI video series where we're currently building a portfolio project. Today I'm going to be talking over this what if graph uh, right here. So a what if graph is a graph that allows uh, the user to adjust certain settings that then affect the visual. So in this case I have the actual profit the company made here in the purple and then when you go into settings you can uh, adjust the orange line to show how we might have performed if um, things were different. So what is the business context that something like this would be used for? So very often in like a financial department or an operations department, they might want to say like, hey, what if we decreased our landing cost 2%? How would that have looked over the prior year? In this scenario, they don't have to wonder or don't have to download the data and then do an analysis in Excel. Instead, they can just quickly go through and make the update. Um, I'm now going to show you how I built this. I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach, and I'm not going to build it from the ground up for you guys. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through uh, all of the different components and how I put them together. That way, you could replicate it. All right. So first, I used a bookmark navigator here. Uh, if you're wondering how to implement a bookmark navigator, I'm going to link a video on how I built one for this slicer panel uh, right now up above. Um, and for that bookmark navigator, I then created a, um, and I'm going to open up my bookmarks, I then created a what if group. And within that what if group, we then have a graph and we have a settings. The graph that I'm using, and I'm going to go to back to that bookmark right here. The graph that I'm using is pretty simple. It's just a basic line graph that I turned on uh, area for, and then uh, basically brought in month into the x-axis, and then profit, and then my simulated profit measure into the y-axis. Okay. In order to then build the slicers, they're just simple slicers. Uh, you can create kind of these generated series by going insert and then going into, or actually modeling, and then going into new parameter and then fields. And then you can set, or numeric range, and then you can set a name and a whole number. Or what you can do is you can create a calculated table using generated series. So in this case, Right, uh, this probably isn't the best DAX to do this, but I was creating a calendar table um, and then uh, was just returning where the day was the first of the month. Also, similarly, I then have a percent table, so I then have a column in this one I created with a field where I'm generating a series of negative one to one, going point one, and then same for revenue. If we go over there, I'm then generating a series of negative 1 to 1.1, which then produces this. Finally, then, for the slicers, I've gone ahead and I've inserted them. Just like if we look at this, I've grouped them together, but it's just a simple slicer, right? So I'm using my month here, my landed cost here from the what if, and this here. And I don't actually need these. Um, well, actually, maybe I do. I do need these um, these measures right here, and I'll show you why. Because what I then did in my profit what if section is I did a few different things. So I created an altered profit, right? And then I multiplied revenue times the value that's currently selected. So I'm multiplying revenue times my revenue increase, and then I'm multiplying my landed cost times my landed crop cost increase. Finally, one of the, the features of this is that a lot of times uh, they don't want to like fully mess with the whole graph. So if we go over here, I'm actually doing some logic so where you can alter the month that it starts editing from. So like if you notice right there, I just want the full time. If I now go all the way down right to 20 and I uncheck all these, You'll notice that when I go over, I now just have a single dot. Um, 
Now let's go back all the way down and let's, for example, go back here, right? If I notice I have multiple selected values, so that airs out. So I probably need to go through and change this drop down to single select. But if I unselect right here and now go back, you'll see that I'm just running it right here. All right, let's go back to this profit what if. So I'm going greater than selected value, then return altered profit, otherwise return blank, which is why this isn't going through. I could update this to be profit right here. So that way the line will stay the same until it diverges. So if you look, right, see, so now it's the same. And then you can see, okay, here's our actuals, right? And then here's our simulated profit. And so if you notice, they're one for one until after. Um, but that, that would be a business stakeholder or, or something that I would leave up to my business stakeholder. Um, finally, I did do some kind of fun touches on this. So first I turned on the um, help tooltip, which allows you to kind of inter, inter, um, put in some text. So I turned that on right here. So I said, this graph is interactive. The purple line represents actual profit. The orange line shows the results uh, of adjustments made in the settings window. Um, so just something to let the end users know. Um, and then, yeah. And then I, oh, and then I also turned off the interaction between this graph and the month slicer. That way uh, we always kind of have a range. So someone could still filter down to fiscal quarter, right? And they would see this. So like if we now are going settings and I now go back here and I go all the way down and I'm like, okay, I want to look at, um, and here we got to clear this month out. So if I now go, hey, I want to look at fiscal quarter Q4, right, and go look, what you'll see here is now we can do some actual modeling. So, right, there we go. So here's like our actual profit and then it's our simulated profit. And so an executive could be like, hey, what happens if we reduce our landing cost by 5%? And then we increase our sales by 2%, right? And if we go back over here, you can actually see what would happen. So here was our profit, right? And then here's our simulated profit. And it's going into effect on 420, right? And that's because right here it's 420. So if we went back and we said, okay, we want to do this for starting in 7 1 2017. And actually, let me, I've got two selections here, so I'm going to undo that. Right, so we're looking at Q4, right? Here's our simulated profit, and I could go ahead and I could update this um, right here. All right, so that is a what if slicer. Let's, let's review quickly how I did this. Okay, so first, bookmark navigator. Second, I created a line graph. Then the line graph has my actual profit measure and then my what if measure put in. Then, I am in the what if measure, I'm using calculated values and you can adjust those calculated values with the slicers that I've put on the slicer settings. Finally, I was able to go ahead and build out those calculated measures using generate series for the number ones and then the calendar DAX function for the dates. And that's it. Um, if you're interested in seeing me continue to build out this portfolio project, please subscribe. I'm currently releasing daily video series on Power BI Basics, which are just like super quick high-level overviews. And then I am releasing probably one or two a week of this more in-depth uh, visualization style. Um, so I'd really appreciate having you along for the journey. If you have any feedback or if I didn't explain something clearly, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to make a follow-up video uh, or um, get back to you in the comments. Um, if you have any feedback on how to improve the videos, let me know. I'm still learning. I'm still pretty new and I really appreciate your time. Thank you.